Hi, welcome back to Ahead of the Curve. I'm happy that you are back tuning in with us again. Last week, we talked about kind of the foundation of the Schroth Method, a little bit about the history of it. And today we are going to be discussing more details on the nitty gritty. So um, what the assessment process looks like, what equipment is needed, what the exercises look like, and time commitment that's required and expected results. So, um, you know, like I said last week, traditional physical therapy and scoliosis specific exercise like the Schroth method, they vary quite vastly from one another. Uh, traditional physical therapy, they are going to be looking at your spine like any other spine. They're not going to be taking in the three-dimensional nature of your curve. Whereas with the Schroth method, with scoliosis-specific exercise, they are considering all dimensions of the curve, all parts of the curve, not just the one that stands out the most, not just your biggest prominence. So that's what really delineates the two from one another and what kind of helps the Schroth method and scoliosis specific exercise to stand out in the crowd. Now, when you go and you get an assessment for uh, the Schroth method, they will be looking at a lot of things that wouldn't be checked out um, in traditional physical therapy. And there's lots of measurements that are taken. One of the measurements is your height. And I, I love this part of what I get to do every day. Um, I help people grow. <laughs> um, it's not always a guarantee that you're going to improve your height, but a lot of times that actually ends up happening. And it's really amazing for people who are in their 60s, 70s to uh, be able to see that change in themselves. So. Um, even if I'm working with somebody in a virtual capacity, I'll have them measure their height because a lot of times we pull from, you know, what we were measured years and years ago and that could have changed. So sometimes that's a surprising thing for people to take a look at is their uh, new height and it might be less than what you remember it being before. So that is one measurement that's taken. Um, another measurement that is taken if you are in person. Um, so I'm going to just stick with the in-person um, because that's what how you're able to do the Schroth method the best. And um, that is the degree of rotation. So there's a device called a scoliometer and it's pretty familiar to people, um, even if you're not in the scoliosis realm, um, you've probably seen it in PT school and it's a little rectangle and it has an opening for the spine to go through. And there's a little marble that goes side to side. It's, it's a little arc. And as you trace the scoliometer down the spine, the marble shifts from side to side and it tells you the degree of rotation that there is. And this is a clinical sign. So this means, or a clinical measurement, this means that we're measuring what we're seeing from the outside. Um, you're not able to get a true rotation measurement without an X-ray. And that is a bit more involved to measure that. That's something that can still be um, assessed and measured in a couple of different ways. Um, with the x-ray, your clinician is able to, to measure that. There's one that's very, very complicated. And then there's one that's a little bit more simple that they can use. And they just um, take a peek at your actual vertebrae and your spinous process, and they kind of break your vertebrae up into little segments. And depending, oops, <laughs> depending, I'm doing a lot of arm movements here. 
um, for those that are listening and sorry for bumping my mic, um, depending on how far your spinous process is rotated and turned within that divided segment, that is your measurement of rotation. Another thing that is measured on that first visit is your lung capacity. So there is a little device. If you've ever gone to the hospital, had a surgery, there's a little device that you can use that you blow into and the marble again, it goes up to a certain level and that's kind of a baseline measurement for us to see if your lung capacity improves over the duration of your treatments and your sessions. Uh, another way that your lung capacity is measured by is by using a uh, cloth tape measure. So kind of the tape measure that they would use if you've ever gone to the tailor or been fitted for a suit or a dress that is being made especially for you. Um, we use a similar tape measure to that to measure lung capacity. So we take that measurement at three different spots. One is um, the whole way around the trunk, right underneath of your armpits. The second one is right around the chest. Um, and then the third one is at the belly button. And those three measurements we take you and in, you inhale as much as you can. So we record that measurement and then you exhale as much as you can re record that second measurement. And then we subtract the two. And that is your baseline measurement for your amount of expansion that you're getting in each of those three spots. And um, then the next thing that is assessed is um, just your baseline posture and positioning. And we use something called a laser level and it's pretty neat for people to be able to see this, um, not only in their photos, but this can be a training tool that we use in uh, video recordings of the client making their little adjustments and um, doing their auto corrections and seeing how when they're in their resting posture and their relaxed positioning and in resting in their curve, see how they're able to center themselves over that plumb line um, can be really powerful for people to be able to see. So then from that point, we use those measurements. Um, balance is also measured. Strength is also measured. Um, so kind of like your other traditional measurements that you would do in any other type of physical therapy, those are all assessed. Um, and we use the x-ray that we have, we use the person in front of us to classify you into a curve type. So, um, you kind of fall into two categories with the curve types. The one is you, you may have a, well, actually three. Um, one is having a primary thoracic curve. The other one is having a primary lumbar curve. And then the third one is having a balance curve. So you have, you know, in most of those scenarios, you have multiple curves but there's one that stands out for the thoracic. There's one that stands out for the lumbar. And then for the balance curve, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Your curves are balanced and they're even with each other. Um, so then from that point, we do a little bit of education and then we begin the treatment and doing some exercises. Now, when um, you're going through your exercises, like I said last week, the different elements of the exercises are elongation, um, breathing, stabilization, and finding those auto corrections. Not in that order, but those are the, the different elements of your Schroth method exercises. So we use 
the fancy stall bars. That's one piece of equipment that is generally used in the Schroth method. Um, if you are practicing stuff at home, you can either use a pull-up bar or just a blank wall. And those are good substitutes to be able to complete the elongation exercises. I've also um, seen people rig up a strap and a dowel and loop that over the door and be able to use that for some elongation work as well. So where there is a will, there is a way <laughs> to, to sort it out. You don't have to make the investment in money and wall space by getting the, the nice, I keep looking over to the side because I have my, my stall bars right over on the wall near me. So that isn't a necessity. Um, it is something that is nice to have um, if you have the capacity to have that in your house. Um, other equipment that is generally used, you um, have probably seen the wedges. So there's several different kinds of wedges that people use. There's ones that have like rice, they call them rice bags. There's rice inside of them and they're wedge shaped. Um, there's ones that are foam and there are ones where you don't actually like purchase a particular wedge, but you can use hand towels as a substitute. And hand towels can be really nice because you can fold them to the width that you actually need for your particular um, comfort and to find your particular balance. Sometimes, you know, stacking a couple wedges on top of each other might not be the most comfortable. They may slide off of each other. So um, using hand towels can be a nice alternative to that. Other equipment would be yoga blocks, uh, stools, and yoga straps. So there's a traction belt that is used that attaches either to your wall bars or um, loops through uh, a door loop and hooks into the door frame. Um, and that those are used for elongation and strengthening exercises as well. So time commitment wise, so, so far we've gone over kind of the overview of what the assessment process looks like, what equipment is needed, and uh, the what type of exercises you would be doing. Um, actually, let's talk about that a little bit further. So exercises, exercise wise, generally you will begin your session doing some form of preparatory work. Um, and usually that's in the form of elongations at the pull up bar. And the preparatory work is more of just kind of getting the body acclimated to movement, warming you up, um, doing some general elongation exercises at the pull up bar to lengthen the spine, get your muscles and your brain acclimated to that lengthened position. And then you go from there and you may do some coordination exercises. You may do some balance training, depending on the person you're working with, what your needs are, what their preferences are. Um, it varies person to person, practitioner to practitioner. And then from there, you go, um, if you're following the very regimented um, way that the exercises are conducted, you would do prone on knees. So that would be a kneeling position. Um, then you do supine. So that's laying on your back. And then you go to side lying. Um, and then you do sitting would be the next step. So um, sitting and standing exercises are more advanced exercises in the Schroth method because you are moving against gravity. So Generally, when you begin the Schroth method, you begin um, laying on your back is the very easiest, um, so to speak. <laughs> it's the most basic of the corrective positions because gravity is helping you. You have your props that you're using under your prominences. 
you have your traction that you're using from your belt around your hips and the strap that's attached to your anchor point. And then you're able to breathe and stabilize and integrate those corrections. And then the uh, second um, easiest would be uh, side lying. So it's a bit more of a challenge because you have more of the sides of your body exposed and open to air. Um, so, and it's a smaller base of support. So you have that side portion of your trunk is being stabilized by the floor. And, um, you know, it's a little bit more of a challenge to correct yourself against gravity there. So then next, I'd like to talk about the um, time commitment that is required for the exercises. So on a daily basis, when you're not in your sessions with your therapist, it's a good idea to commit at least 20 minutes a day to your corrective exercises. And that can look a variety of ways. Anything can be a corrective exercise, honestly. Um, if you are integrating your auto corrections into movement. So when you get more advanced and you've been doing it for a long period of time, there's a little bit less time commitment um, to your specific corrective exercises that's required. Um, <clears throat> but initially, you want to be doing at least 20 minutes on a daily basis, and you want to do some form of elongation, and you want to act de definitely make sure that you're incorporating the expansive breathing, because the breathing is what makes the, the biggest difference in your body transforming and um, really taking a hold of the corrections. Um, and then what can you expect? So how soon can I expect results? I feel like that is one of the, the questions I get asked the most um, when I'm working with people in any capacity. And, you know, really what you're putting into it is what you get out of it. Um, but there's a lot of factors that come into play when we talk about results. So what is the, the quality of you doing the exercises on your own? Are you using a mirror for feedback um, in order to make sure that you're in the right positioning? Um, are you recording yourself? That can be a very good tool, a very good way to be able to see if you're in the right alignment or not. So I have clients and patients who use both. They use mirrors, they use their selfie uh, mode on their camera or on their tablet when they're doing their exercises to make sure that they're in the correct alignment. Um, and then also like, what are the, what was your baseline? Um, were, are you somebody who wasn't very familiar with exercise and, you know, prior to starting, starting, <laughs> um, were you someone who had more of a severe curve? So all of those things kind of factor in when we're talking about expectations for what you can, um, how long it will take for you to see changes and progress. On average, it takes uh, 20 sessions to really begin to absorb and make these corrections more auto corrections. So you're not having to think about them quite as much. It's coming more naturally to you. So that on average is the length of time that it takes um, for people to really see the changes and see the progress. So in summary, um, <laughs> the, the assessment process with the Schroth method is definitely different in, in a lot of ways than if you would go um, for traditional care 
physical therapy care for your spine. Take a lot of different measurements. Um, we talked about the different props that are required for the exercises that you're doing, what the exercises look like and how those kind of progress as you get stronger and more advanced in your corrections. And we also talked about uh, your time commitment to the exercises and then how long it takes to see results. So like anything, what you put into it is usually what you get out of it. And I hope that you found this information helpful. Um, if you've been enjoying this podcast, please make sure that you rate it on um, iTunes if you're listening to it or leave me a little note on YouTube if you are watching it so that I can um, get your feedback and your input on maybe other topics that you would like to hear. Uh, small group scoliosis coaching is a great way to make changes in your curve. And I offer that through the Scoliosis Strength Collective. I work with a small group of people online and it's a great way to begin to make these changes in your body and your spine and your confidence. Um, if you're interested in checking that out, you can click the link in the show notes and schedule a discovery call to see if it's a good fit to work together or not. Um, but again, I thank you for joining and tuning in today. Until next time, make sure that you stay ahead of the curve. Thank you.